life, the universe, and everything. Where does it all come from? What's it all about? What can science teach us about all of the beauty and wonder that we find ourselves in? Many may say that science gives us answers but doesn't give us meaning. Well, that's because we are creatures who live by the design of stories, and so we need stories to give us meaning. But we can anchor those stories in scientific method so that our stories are in cohesion with science. So I'm about to give you a new creation story, a new way of looking at the world and the universe and what life is that is based on science but still has that transcendent quality of the story that gives us meaning and wonder. Let's start at the Big Bang. Here we have an eruption of hot plasma. It's just hydrogen ruled by three fundamental forces, and those forces are the strong force, the weak force, the electromagnetic force. And these forces are so powerful that nothing can really unseat what they're doing. They are the forces that drive entropy and chaos and randomness, and nothing would have happened in our universe had those been the only forces at work. But then there's this mysterious other force. It is the fourth fundamental force according to physics, and that force is gravity. But the thing that's mysterious about gravity is it is much weaker than these first three forces. Scientists, especially those who subscribe to M-theory or string theory, say that gravity is so weak compared to the other forces, it must leak into our universe from another dimension. What does that mean? How does gravity leak into our universe from another dimension? There might be this parallel dimension or this super dimension, this dimension higher than our four dimensions that we understand our universe to be, where gravity is a strong force, but only in that dimension and in these four dimensions, we experience it as much weaker. But gravity is like this bulldozer in the universe. It starts shaping that hot plasma, the, all those hydrogen atoms that were just smeared everywhere, it starts shaping those into stars and galaxies and planets. And as it shapes those stars, deep in those stars, the hydrogen atoms discover a new power, a new window, if you will. And that new window is quantum superposition. The only way a hydrogen atom ever became more than a hydrogen atom, meaning helium and every other element that exists didn't exist originally. It had to be formed by hydrogen atoms coming together and creating a new element. But the force involved in those atoms actually coming together and creating a new element is basically impossible without this new mysterious window called quantum superposition. Down the road, planets are formed and on some planets there is water. And water is two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. And through the hydrogen bonds in water, something weird is happening. Hydrogen does this weird thing with quantum superposition. And if you've ever looked at clouds, or the ripples in water, or snowflakes, you'll see that there is something, some majestic order that seems to be organizing water. When you look at all the clouds in the sky, they don't look disorganized. They don't look like random chaos. They look like there's some sort of shape or intention, like an artist painted them. And when you look at snowflakes, there's this immaculate beauty to every snowflake. But where does it come from? Where does that order come from? What is quantum superposition? What does it mean? It means that impossible things can happen. Impossibly improbable things can happen. And the most probable thing is that everything devolves into a smear of chaos. That things will get mixed up, tossed around, it'll just become a big smear. But what quantum superposition allows to happen is the most improbable thing. Imagine being blindfolded and asked to run through a forest and you can watch our first video from the future, We Are From The Future, and see an example of this. If you were asked to run through that forest without hitting a tree blindfolded, there is a potential path you could take where you don't strike a tree. But the likelihood of you taking that path is so small that it's extremely unlikely you would get through that forest. If you were to go into a state of quantum superposition, you would witness your body become thousands of you, or hundreds of thousands of you, or millions of you, and all of those potential yous run through that forest, and then the one of you that makes it all the way through the forest could be witnessed, could be observed. And if that one of you is observed, 
it eliminates all the other yews, and that was the only yew that started at the beginning of the forest. It's like that observer just went and pushed your outcome back through time and gave you this incredibly idealistic outcome, this miraculous outcome of being able to run through the forest without striking a tree. That is the magic of quantum superposition. But it doesn't just stop there because water with its hydrogen bonds opens the doorway for that magic to happen at ambient temperatures. Water brings these hydrogen bonds into a state where in ambient temperatures, something amazing can happen right here. And that's where the snowflakes come from. And that's where the clouds come from. The cloud formations, the amazing majestic beauty of snowflakes are all as if they're being designed from some higher dimension. And that's what we're talking about here is that just like gravity can leak into our universe from a higher dimension, it seems that quantum superposition opens a doorway for some higher state of order to leak into our universe from a higher dimension. That something is able to come in and using that mysterious quality of quantum superposition, stack the deck, manipulate our universe in a way that highly improbable outcomes happen. The highly improbable outcome of a beautiful snowflake or a perfectly majestic sky full of clouds. But then another really highly improbable outcome happened, which is DNA. If you look at a DNA molecule, it is incredibly well organized. It is beautiful. And so you have this amazing thing, like a snowflake that has come out of water, which is a giant amplifier of quantum superposition. Because DNA, every corner of DNA is another hydrogen bond. So instead of just two hydrogen bonds, which water carries with it, now you have this structure full of hydrogen bonds. And now this structure has amazing quantum abilities. And through those quantum abilities, DNA seems to have created all that we see with life. But what is life? Where is this order coming from? It could be said that the order is seeping in through the quantum superposition that DNA allows for. There is a whole new arena of study called quantum biology, which is looking at how quantum effects seem to be prevalent in life and if you look at the beauty of life and all the amazing structure of life it is right in alignment with that weird power the quantum superposition that opens the doorway and allows to enter into our universe now the ancient chinese knew about this this order and they called it li and li's direct translation means the markings in jade and what li is described as by these ancient chinese philosophers is that you can see the order in clouds, you can see the order in how water flows, you can see it in the fiber and muscle or the grain and wood, that there is some inexplicable order to all of these things that we can see is there but our brains can't comprehend. We can't calculate how the grain and wood would arise. We can't calculate how those clouds would form, but we do see that there is great order to them. And this is our same problem as we try to comprehend science and live our lives by science, that we can't calculate enough to really live a life according to the data of science and the calculus of science. But what we can do is we can witness beauty. And when we see beauty, we know there is order to that. And Li is an expression of this beauty, an understanding of this beauty. Li is a spiritual principle that says there is this beauty and we should live our lives according to this beauty. Well, incidentally, the markings in jade, which is the direct translation of Li, the markings in jade are created by water. All of this order, the door is opened by water. And then DNA further amplifies that as a greater amplifier than even water. But then beyond DNA is the nerve cells. And when you have neurons working in harmony, you have billions of neurons in your brain working together, all of those neurons can actually go into states of quantum superposition which means that your very mind and your very heart, which is actually your heart is 60% neural tissue, all of that can actually go into a state of quantum superposition and allow you to have brilliant, miraculous ideas. Ideas that seem to come from another land, another realm, another place. They come from on high, they're called divine inspiration or the spark of genius. That spark of genius is very much along the same order that the water was amplifying to make the simple snowflake. But now you can make 
entire cities, you can make entire civilizations, you can make technology that changes the world. And what this philosophy allows us to do is recognize that there is this greater order that has been pervasive through all of time and that we are part of it. And we can open our minds and our hearts to becoming channels and aligning ourselves with this greater order. And when we do that, we become agents of this miraculous thing called life. And when we don't do it, we become agents of entropy. And so recognizing whether we are aligned with this greater order or not aligned with it gives us almost a scientific grounding for a new kind of morality that lets us know whether we are being true to what we are and what we are is life. If you'd like to experience more of this or even participate in creating the next piece, please join us at upriser.org.